What up, what up? This is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 154. I am your host, Ace Harris, and I'm here with two very special people today. Um, first, I'm going to start off with my A&R, Dre, Dre Hunter, in the building. Yes, sir. Thank you. Director Thank you of for A&R. You know yes, what I'm yes, man. Thank you for inviting me. Newly promoted. Um, I've been knowing Dre for about five, six years. He's he's worked at Reach for about two years. Um, we're probably going to let him tell his full story, but yeah. Shout out Dre. Also, the choice finest. Um, this brother right here. You know what I'm saying? You may have heard about them demon killing, you know what I'm saying? Demon killer gang. <laughs> okay. You may have seen them on, on on Instagram going viral. I mean, this this guy, I ain't gonna lie, I I Dre said thank you for putting me on to him, Absolutely. but DKG Kai's in the building. Y'all give it up for him. You know what Come on. What's going on, man? What's going um, on? this is uh it's gonna be a dope conversation, man. First of all, how you feeling? Um, how you doing today, man? Yeah, I'm great. It's surreal being here right now. Hey, yeah. I love that, man. You I ain't gonna lie, you dripped out, bro. I appreciate yeah, it. You went crazy, Let me hold something, man. bro. Man, you, look, man, you got us looking like we, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm like, are we, I, do we work at Reach or what? <laughs> That's the Detroit in me, man. We oh, got to step y- y- all the time. Y- 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 y'all be popping, huh? <laughs> oh, all the time. All yeah. the time. Low so, key, I don't know if it's right to say, because I, I mean, I do watch a show that's probably not all the way. Yeah. You know, BMF show kind of hard. It's hard. I'm sorry. Some of the scenes, I get, I watch it my wife, y'all, so don't judge me. Okay. Some of the scenes is not. I wouldn't endorse it, but this the swagger of yeah. like Detroit culture. Yeah. It reminds me of Atlanta so much. Uh, it's yeah. like a real like fly like it's street, but like savvy. Yeah, because it, it, that's where Detroit player originated from, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. y'all have always been about fashion and yeah. style. Yeah, like we was popping out. Like, well, I wouldn't, but back then, like my parents was popping out Gators and Ooh. you know the Minks and all, all that. that. Like, yeah. And then even like the Cartiers is a staple in Detroit. Like a lot of people. Don't really know that for real. So, but no, like Cartier's is a staple. Like mm. it's just just because it, I guess like the flashy frames and all right, that. Right, right. But like you said, it's still like it's savvy though. Savvy. I can wear these with a suit if I want. Yeah, to. it's yeah. like mm-hmm. it's like a it's like it's like a smooth gangster. It's like yeah, exactly. I got I got the I got that thing on me. Yeah. But I'm dressed really fly <laughs> too. Yeah. So don't don't make me have to pull it out. Yeah. Like, I just yeah, it's certain like swag I, I feel. I'm like I can rock with um Detroit um and yeah and also I want to also want to have you Dre share a little bit about where you from Absolutely. man because I know. Some of y'all probably have seen Dre on the Reach channels or around me or in doing his thing. But I think it would be good to also let people know the people who work behind the mm. scenes. And it's also a cool connection with how I got how I found how I got um introduced to DKG through Dre. So yeah, Dre, just share a little bit about yeah. your backstory. We're gonna spend most of the time talking about Kai, but I want you I'm gonna get you out of the way. Let's, look. let's do it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh so I'm from Miami, Florida. Um I moved up to Atlanta. I moved up to Atlanta when I was about uh probably like 10, we came up here, um, and then I moved all around Atlanta, so I was yeah. all over. So I, I from College Park to Gwinnett. Oh, you was in College Park? I, I was in College I'm Park. I'm in College Park now. Yeah, I landed <sighs> in College Park. Like when we first came, and, and you know Atlanta, you come in College Park, you about to hear the accent. Strong. Bro. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> you gonna get the shouty. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we came from Miami to Atlanta in College Park, and it was like a culture shock. And then from there we moved to Gwinnett. Now that's a whole nother I, I was dynamic. raised in Gwinnett, so wow. <laughs> so so it, it was it was a whole nother dynamic. It was like College Park, you get the strong Atlanta accent, then you go to Gwinnett, and then it's like diversified over there. And then we landed back in Latonia, and then that's where I was raised on the uh, east side of Atlanta. East side. That's where a lot of my like culture came from. Right. A lot of my musical taste came from For the sure. east side of Atlanta. It was it was a lot of like young superstars. That was kind of coming out of there. I, I remember like people being on like, like one of my friends was on The Voice, and mm. another one was like, it, uh, I, I forgot the guy's name, but it was like he was on the radio, and I remember just you know seeing all all these guys that I grew up with just kind of blowing up, and um, it kind of got me excited about the music industry. I started um, I started a songwriting group with a guy named Olu. Olu, yeah. Olu, and I think Olu's mom. Met your shout out, God, bro. What, was it Olu's mom met my cousin's wife's at a bank? Who does her? He does. She, my cousin's wife, Mima, no, it'd be shout out, Mima, does taxes for like Olu's wife. Yeah. And normally, when family members pass you music connections, it'd be trash. Yeah, I was producing at the time, and I got, a, I think, a CD. Yeah, of you, some of y'all's work as writers, and right. I was like, yeah, Yo, they yeah. fire. So we tapped in. This yeah. is like eight years ago, I feel yeah, like. yeah, eight, yeah. nine years ago. Yeah, it was like eight, nine years ago. <laughs> we, um, we were writing. We actually went out of town and did a record, and you called us while we were still like coming back to Georgia. We were super excited, and then that started our relationship. We started getting to know each other more. Yeah. 
Um, I started moving around the scene a little more. Uh, I got into this situation where I started A and R. It was like not really A and R. Yeah, but, you it, know, it was. What, you know, it, yeah, it was. It was. It was kind of like uh, I call it street A and R, where I found some talent yeah. and decided to just take them in and literally worked on that project for four years for free. Wow, never charged for studio time. Y'all hear that? All the uh, aspiring A and Rs. If you want an A and R, nobody's stopping you. Nobody's stopping you. You ain't got to have a title. Ace, Ace ain't got to validate you. Kai ain't got to validate nope. you. Dre ain't got to. Nope. If God validated you, go find artists and help them make great music. Exactly. And it really is that simple. I'm it's, really, it's really that simple. But at the time, it was like I was doing it because a friend of mine was in the group. It was a group named Hamilton Park. They were signed with Andre Harrell. They just left their deal like a year before I yeah. got them. And then... Um, me uh, and Marcus, Marcus was a part of the group. We went to a young lady by the name of Joy Young. Joy Young, yeah. now at Interscope, and she helped manage the group. Right. I was a and in the group. I remember, and, I remember those times. I had some. Yeah. And, then, and then also, like, you know, kind of fast forward how, I, how Dre's here at Reach yeah. Record and how he introduced us to Kai. Dre was, like, writing as a writer all around the city. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily Christian stuff, but just being a dope creative and I, I called Dre to work on Wande's first single, Blessed yeah, yeah, Up, which Blessed Dre up. actually wrote yeah, yeah. on a whim. We won't have time to get into that story, but yeah, let's just yeah. say that was a God moment. Mm -hmm. And then that song went up. And then once we had an opening to hire a new A&R, yeah. uh, two years ago, I, I I brought Dre on board. Yeah, yeah. And he's had, he's had a really dope, I would say, honestly, you can probably firm with like a dope spiritual transformation. Absolutely. And just yeah. being around yeah. other Christians who don't yeah. look like how the world projected them in the right, past. Right, right. And, and he's just been an advocate here. I mean, he's been killing it. And one thing about Dre, uh, shout out to all the up and coming artists. I'm gonna say this too, because I know people be asking me all the time. Reach Records is not the standard. We just a reference point. We can't sign everybody. We love y'all. We tap in with people who we think are dope and we wanna help support yeah. and find ways to work together. Right. Now there are moments where we feel like we can take the step further. Yeah, yeah. And to be honest, there's people doing it on their own without a label platform that right. still helps this community ecosystem. That's kind of why we're doing the 116 Life anyway. Mm -hmm. So I say all that to say, everybody that's going, popping on socials, Christian hip hop artists, R&B artists, drill, whatever, Dre be on it quick. Like he's yeah. faster, you so fast, I be yeah. late. Yeah, And um, I got a game I play. Yeah. <laughs> so Hovi and One Day is is the most amazing A&Rs. Facts. <laughs> in this <laughs> camp, right? So my game is if I could beat Hovian in, in one day at following this artist, then I'm ahead of the curve. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Mean? And so Dre found DKG Kai, which when Dre finds artists, he hits the A&R chat, me and Alex. Right. And again, speaking again, the 116 Life, it's about faith, music, culture. But there's, before we get into the, you know, the, the, the faith part and the culture part, it starts with the music. And Dre, tell us a little bit of how you found Kai. And then Kai, I want you to just... Yeah. Let us know who you are for real, for real. For sure. but yeah. Uh, so Kai, Kai <clears throat> kept getting sent to my DMs. Like there was a couple people that sent Kai to my DMs. I I didn't really pick up on it at the time. And then um, I went <laughs> to San Antonio with Big Breeze, and um, we were out there. And I met Kai. The first thing that I liked about him was his personality. Wow. I just thought he was a cool, like laid back. Yeah, I mean, person. within like ten minutes, I mean, I, I like I, I can yeah. actually like watch a basketball game with this dude. Exactly, like, you know what I'm saying? We we, we yeah. cool in it. Yeah. So that's what it was. I was like, oh, he cool people. Yeah. And once I seen that he was cool people, then I was willing to like, okay, okay. let me see what his music sound like. Okay. And then so once I he got on stage, I was in the back and I heard him on stage uh -huh. and I just hear the crowd. <sighs> Whoa. <laughs> I'm like, yo, <laughs> this boy going crazy out there. That's crazy. So I go out there. He's like jumping in the audience. Like the audience isn't super engaged. That's crazy. And, Love it. And I'm like, oh, okay, so this this is a star. Right. You know right, what I mean? Right. Immediately, the, the songs were amazing. And then we got to talking in the car a little more. And I just realized like on top of him being a star, like, oh, he's really humble too. Right. You know what I mean? So that's what, that's what really sells me on an artist, definitely in the Christian spaces because right. it's like, who are they in Christ? Like, how are they moving? How do they show Christ Facts. through themselves? You know what I mean? I love that. And that's what makes me want to commit and help after that. So it was, it was all personality for me. Person, yeah, I yeah. mean, personality and character. You're, yeah. It goes before, again, faith, culture, and music before. I mean, it, the music is important, but, you know, sense and character, I think, is also yeah. a main point. So DKG Kai, why don't you tell <clears> them who you are, where you from? We got about a couple minutes on this segment, but I think it'd be good for people to just hear, like, yeah. as much as you can, everything about what you got going on, man. For sure. Um, 
Man, DKG Kai from Detroit, man, 313. Hey. Um, yeah, I, I really never really wanted to be a rapper, for real. Like, Whoa. Growing up, I tried it when I was like 12, and my parents were just like, bro, this ain't Christian music. Like, you ain't you ain't got it. You know, I never had a musical bone in my body. Um, so I was I was a basketball player. So I was hooping. I was a star basketball player. Um, a lot of people heard some of that testimony. So I ended up going to college. You, um, you, you got you got recruited recruited to college? Oh, yeah. what what school? If you don't mind me asking. Yeah, I went to Spring Arbor University. It's a okay. Christian school, and then I transferred uh, and went to. Well, I ain't gonna say that name because I might gotta say something about that school later on. Hey, they, 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 another... got, they, they got some little smoke. They got. Yeah, a, I, ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I went to. I went <laughs> give, to. Give us the one. give us the acronym. I, oh, I, oh, you. Oh, yeah, God. yeah. It's a couple of them though. It's uh, a couple of them. Okay, but, keep, but keep yeah. Going. So we, you know, I went there, uh, transferred to play for them, and that's kind of like when I jumped off the porch, so to say. Okay. Uh, cause like I said, I grew up. My parents was pastors, and they, you know, they made sure that I, we kind of had a, a sheltered home. Right. Like they would let me go off and do whatever, and you know, I'm from Detroit, so I'm gonna see certain stuff. Oh, for sure. This is gonna happen. But yeah, so when I got to college, I'm by myself. So mm. I'm like, bro, I'm about to, and I'm a star hooper. So it's oh, like, it's, bro, it's I'm up. About, you know. So yeah, I'm doing some. I did some of everything, and um, end up getting kicked out of that school my sophomore year. Really? Yeah. It's like from from academics or behavior. What? Both. Can you talk a little bit about yeah, if you don't? Yeah, yeah no, well, for yeah. sure. Um, man, it's crazy to even t t talk about it because how far I am now. But and, yeah, sorry if I'm brushing. No, 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 yeah, no, okay. no, no. It's cool. But yeah, so <clears throat> pretty much halfway through the season, I just stopped caring about school in general, right? Because I'm I'm partying, I'm doing some everything. We going to parties, we fighting all the time. Yeah. It's just you know whatever. And then also, um, I got in trouble for like Dad found out I was also selling weed. And smoking a lot, which right. obviously NCAA, you can't be, you know what I'm saying? You can't right. do none of that. Don't, so, NCAA does not play. Not at all, whatsoever. So, yeah, they gave me a couple chances, but I was just hard-headed at the time. like, And I just kept going. I knew better, but I just, you know, kept doing what I was doing just to say that I did, you know. And uh, when I got kicked out, I, I thought about going to the military. I thought Word. all type of stuff. So my parents was like, they got, they had a family. Well, yeah, that the business that they ran back then. It was like, bro, you might as well just come down here with us, run, help run this business, X, Y, and Z. So that's what I did for a minute. Long story short, uh, half my family from Indiana. So okay, what, was, what 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 city? Indianapolis. Okay, gotcha. So yeah, it was a night that my cousin had asked me to end up going. Uh, at, he had ended up asking me to go out to the club, but even in my mess, like I could always hear God. Like, Facts, you know. So Love I that. just kept hearing like, don't go. <clears throat> don't go so I'm telling him like bro let's just not go tonight and he just you know being hard-headed cousin you know he like nah bro I'm about to go anyway I get a call like four in the morning from my mama like man they gunned him down execution Dang. style so if I, I know for a fact if I would have been with him that would have been me you too so it was like a wake-up call that right after that at the day of his funeral, got arrested for doing some other stuff. The day stuff. of his funeral? Yep. The day of his like, funeral. Like after like after the funeral. After the funeral. Yep. Well, me and my wow. cousins, we had went to the club and got into it. That was the club after the funeral. Yeah. Was it y'all trying to grieve? Or yep. Was, okay. Yep. Sometimes the pain makes you do Exactly. I, I get it. Which is it was so I mean, that's what you process you know? it how you know how to yeah. do it. So that's we I ended up uh getting arrested that night. Man, that was just my last like situation. I'm just like, bro, God, if you get me out of this, it was one of them, it was one of them moments, one of them promise prayers. Like, God, if you get me out of this, I ain't going, I ain't going back. And the cop just looked at me and was like, bro, something different about you. Really? Yeah. Like he just looked at me like, you ain't supposed to be here. Like all these other people, I don't, I can't That's speak amazing. for it, but you, you are different. So I end up getting off, no charges. Thanks be to God, no Whew. record. Shout oh, out, no, God, yeah. Joe. And it was supposed to be you, some you slid stuff. through, like, man. Yeah, and I end up getting off. Long story short, came back home uh, to Detroit and really, really got saved for real. Like, found my own relationship mm. with God. Mm. Started youth pastor maybe s about a year after that. And then about a year and a half after that is when I just kind of fell into rapping. Like, just That's literally amazing, fell bro. into it. And, yeah, so it's been like a year and maybe eight months since I've been rapping for real. I mean, I just had to pause to just unpack and decompress. Mm -hmm. We could probably get into it more in the next segment, but yeah. that's just a lot. Your story was, I mean, you said it, you said a lot. Yeah, yeah, And I'm well, still kind of like sitting with everything and seeing how, you know, God brought you through, bro. Mm -hmm. Your cousin was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yep. And you just decided, well, well, you were being, you know, mindful of the voice of the Lord. Yeah. And you just didn't go. Yep. And now, now you're sitting here going up, going crazy, making music for the Lord. Yep. That's amazing. We're going to get into more of your story, man, in the next, uh, next segment. But this is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio Series Channel 154. 
I'm your host, Ace Harris. This is my man, DKG Kai, my man, Dre Hunter. Y'all stay tuned. We'll come back right after this break. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is the 116 Life uh, Holy Culture Radio Series, Channel 154. I'm your host, Ace Harris. And I'm here with my man, DKG Kai, Dre Hunter. And we just heard an amazing, I don't want to say story, I say testimony yeah. about how DKG Kai, uh, you know, his upbringing, where he was raised and how he came to the Lord. And, and we were just talking on the break how, like, sometimes, you know, God just, within his supernatural power, he just... He, he looks out for his children. He goes and gets them mm-hmm. on some like, yeah, you didn't come to God. God came to you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like, yo, I, I, I'm, I'm pulling you out of this mess. So that's super dope that you said that. And also hearing how Dre introduced us to, to Kai. So yeah, man. So tell us what your name stand for. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, tell us everything about that. I want to just get into that a little bit. You for know what I'm sure. saying? Yeah, shout out to the whole Demi Killer gang, man. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's what... <clears throat> That's what DKG stands for. Uh, long story short, the way I came up with it, when I first started doing music, uh, Project was in the studio with Zanti. That's I, I Project? I Project. Producer. Yep, okay, yep. Producer I Project. Yep. Shout, Shout out, out Project. to He's hard, by the way. Yeah, so he was in the studio with Zanti. Uh, Zanti had came to Detroit to finish his uh, album that he just released last year. Yeah. And um, nobody knew who I was. I had just started rapping for real. Project always saw potential in me. Like He always wanted to work, just waited for the right time. He calls me. He like, hey, Zanti at the studio, get here right now. I'm like, I'm just looking at the phone, like, bro, don't nobody even know who I am. Like, I ain't got no projects out. I'm like, what? So I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. I get in the car, go straight to the studio, meet Zanti. Long story short, we knock out the guy my steps on in like 20 minutes. Wow. So we met, we just vibed out for real. He was like, bro, I like you. Like, come to Nashville, I wanna talk to you about some stuff. So I get to Nashville. He was like, bro, like, you gotta like brand yourself. Like, you, you, crazy like you a star for real like you got all of this going on but you gotta like box it in so i'm okay cool so um we was he was like bro because i was going by just kai at the time so he like bro you got to put some like initials or something for your name (laughs) so i'm like all right like cool so he was like bro you always talk about killing demons like that's it seemed like that like that's what you standing on for real that's your brand so like maybe just dk kai so I'm like, okay, cat, yeah, cool. And I wrote it out. I'm like, bro, ugh. Like, I, I just didn't like how it looked. Uh, I you know? feel you, I feel you. Yeah. The phonetics, the vibes. Yeah. yeah. You're from, you from Detroit. You a player, you know bro. It got to be smooth. <clears throat> for sure. So I'm like, bro, I don't like how that looked for real. So I just started playing with it, and I thought about it. Like, I'm like, man, like, one day I really want to have my own collective. Like, so I'm like, you know what, bro, I'm about to – what about Demon Killer Gang? And, then like, a light bulb just went off. And he was like, bro, that's it. And we we went on with it and we ran with it. So now we got the collective going crazy right mm. now in Detroit, man. Yo, so everybody's guys. in Detroit. Yep. Yep. Okay, that's what's hard. Yep. And Dre, you you found DKG through like I think was it didn't Drewski like tell me yeah. maybe tell the story, help me understand like how that happened. So I know you were telling me the story in San Antonio yeah. about Drewski. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, that was crazy. So Christian's real music was like that. You are you already like was working on a song and you just knew like, oh this the one. Yeah. yeah. So I got halfway through recording Christian drill music. I recorded it at my house, like no studio, no nothing. I just woke up. On you engineer, you engineer yourself? Mm-hmm. Oh, you yep. bought that life? Yeah, I do my own videos and everything, man. Like oh, I, I love the art work behind it, you know. Love that, man. Love so, so yeah, I'm engineering myself. I, I woke up at like three, four in the morning, and I knocked Christian drill music out. And I'm like halfway through the song, and when I when I got the hook, I just start punching it in. This that real music. This that Christian mm, mm, drill music. I'm like, man, like. This could be an anthem. So I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I'm put it out. I let people hear it. And they was like, bro, yeah, you gotta do this. So I put it out. Um, and then I put it on my album and it just didn't do nothing. Mm. So I'm like, bro, like what? So I'm looking at God, like, all right, well, I just I noticed the one. So what's right. about to happen? Right. All of a sudden, man, shout out to Tiff White. I never met her in person, Who's, but okay. um, Tiff White, okay. Yeah, we we homies on like social media. Okay. She um randomly didn't know who this girl was, she didn't know me. She heard the song. <sighs> Uh, and posted it on TikTok, and it just went stupid. Like a million likes, I think it's at right now wow. on TikTok. Probably like ten million views. And what was that? A music video? Or was no. that a? So they, a I'm giving her that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So they, it was That's just an audio. No music video. Like I wasn't even gonna shoot a video for because I was tired of shooting videos because I edit myself. Like I do everything myself. So I was getting so this tired guy, of doing this guy that. Is one of, he went on the machines. Right? No, yeah. Facts. Yeah, I, I was so it. tired of doing all that and putting that work in yeah. and people not appreciating it. Yeah. You know? yeah. So I'm like, you know what? I'm not about to do that for Christian Drill music. So I just did the audio. Yeah. And when she put it up and it went viral on TikTok, then somebody snatched her video off TikTok, put it on Twitter, then it went viral on Twitter. 
So I'm talking to my people. I'm like, bro, we got to get a video to this like ASAP. So we shoot the video. And the day, how fast I, did y'all shoot the video from that moment? I just, I just wanna like how long, like how long did it come together? Yeah, how, how fast did you was the video out from when it went to Twitter? Oh, from that moment, yeah, probably like a week. Okay, yeah, like artists, I, I, yeah. artists, yeah. I, 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 I just wanna like walk this. This is like yeah. a master class in how to be a self made yeah, independent. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sitting back and I'm like, like I'm hitting my homies. I'm we thinking our ideas like, what can we do? Let's get some Hellcats. Let's get this, this, and the third. And I'm like, nah, like let me direct this. I got this. Like I know what I'm gonna do. Let's keep it simple. Right. Like let's throw some little, you know, whatever in there, some hints. And we shoot the video, and the day that the video is slated to drop, I check my Apple Music, and I finally <clears> hit <throat> a million all-time streams. So like that was huge for me. So and it's the day that the song about the, the the video about to drop, the video about to come out. I post it on TikTok, which I never do. I always post on TikTok when the video or the song is already out. But something told me again, listening to God, right? Put it out, like put the snippet out. I put the snippet out. We all watching the video, like as it's premiering, we at one of my homegirls' house. <clears throat> Shout out to Zoe uh, back in Detroit. We all at Zoe's house and we watching it on the TV. And my phone just started going off. They, I'm getting calls like, yeah. hey, bro, you famous. Ah. I'm like, what? So I'm looking at the phone. I'm like, bro, stop playing. I'm thinking they just seen the video. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Making jokes. So I'm like, man, whatever. So I put the phone down. I hung up on my on my boy Roy and he called me back like three times. I'm like, bro, what do you want? And he always playing. So I'm not taking it serious. <clears throat> he like, bro, check your DM. Like, Drewski just posted you. So I'm like, what? So then I'm getting other calls from everybody wow. else. Then my Instagram blowing up. So we all like, everybody gathered around me at this point. So we looking. And like, as soon as I open my phone, everybody in the house like, bro, it's up. Like, we, yeah, this, this is what we need. So that was like kind of like my big break, so to speak. Like, that was what gave mm. me exposure because normally Drewski would post an artist and kind of like, flame on my like laugh and all that but it wasn't that type of energy it, what, like, what, what was he saying it was like he said something about like the bible blicky bar right so when of course that got a lot of traction so all the comments though i'm thinking the comments about to be on my head like, all this corny da, da, da. people in the comments like bro if this is what church music is i'm going to church on <laughs> sunday like out there you know what i'm saying like for real like they was going crazy in the comments so i'm yeah. like yo like we really got something like we got the we got the power to really kind of yeah change the culture you know and right. change the narrative like especially like i said for detroit like it's some christian rappers in detroit but to make it how i'm making it right there right now like besides porsche i can't name nobody else for real that's so dope bro yeah that's so dope i mean like there's lots to unpack there man just hearing like your hustle mm -hmm. you know your work ethic <clears throat> and then also talk about <sighs> Cause some people, you know, that's that's the upside, right? Yeah. And uh, we talked about this before, Dre. I think you addressed it on your socials. Yeah. Some people are just honestly, <laughs> they're taking it back. This is like for some. I look, I'm I'm pretty even kill. I yeah. I I am like, you walking for the Lord. You making yeah. music. This is it's not that C, it's not that deep. So yeah. Why do why do people have an issue with Demon Killer Gang? Why do, mm -hmm. why do you think people have an issue with like that? The name, yeah. the usage, and mm -hmm. tell us what you mean by that. You know what for I'm saying? So people. People always have a problem with something when they're not like used to it. People don't like change. So when you used to seeing something done one way, it's even like, and not comparing myself to Jesus whatsoever, but I use this as an example all the time. It's funny how like even when Jesus came and obviously we know he was preaching the gospel, he was doing what was right, but the Pharisees, because it was different, because he was talking in parables and he was doing things that people hadn't seen, they automatically demonized it. Right. And the church has a habit of doing that because it's different. Even when Cray first came out, like I studied his journey when he first came out. Like they was talking about he wasn't a Christian rapper. He, and he wasn't saying nothing about no Bible, blinky killing demons, nothing. Like he really standing on what's he like. Yeah. <clears throat> so when people, you know, like I said, people wasn't really used to, you know, hearing nobody talk like that. And like I said, again, being from Detroit, even our, even Detroit secular music, like it's just, we have a thing for, I'm gonna say what I want to say. Like, mm. if I believe, if this is what I'm believing in, right. this is what I'm going to say. I'm not going to tailor it to fit your perspective, your box. So <clears throat> they that's got dope. a problem. I, I love that. Yeah, and they, I think that's really why they got the issue with it, just because it's different. But to kill a demon really means, I'm so glad we talking about this. Yeah, because I think you, you had did a post a on your, on yeah. and I, I, I like was like, <laughs> I was yeah. like DKG gang all day. Yeah. So, <laughs> I was Because I mean, I think it's, look, I, I have friends yeah. that, this is, like they have a theological disagreement about mm -hmm. the use of that term in mm -hmm. rap and it's like a really it's more of a semantic thing yeah, honestly more sure. than like a theological theology thing yeah. why don't you explain what you mean by for demon sure. killer and what you mean by that yeah yeah, yeah. demon ki to kill a demon right 
I don't know what anybody else mean when they say that. But for me, to kill a demon really means like every day we struggle with demons. Like every morning we wake up and it's things that's trying to pull us away from God. No matter <clears throat> what that is, that could be pride, that could be right. lust, that could be lying spirit, whatever it may be. You always have something that's trying to pull you away from God. So that that's your demon. So to kill that demon is literally you doing things like spiritual maintenance, fasting, praying, you know what I'm saying? Making sure you have godly community around you. Like that's what killing a demon is. But for me, in music, we use analogies all the time. Like somebody will say, I got so much faith, it feel like I'm walking on water. You're not actually walking on water. It's right. just an analogy. Or saying, God brought me back to life. I'm like, Lazarus, you weren't dead, actually. Right. You, you might have been, you know, metaphorically. Gotcha. So it's the same thing with uh, with the music. But it's, it's so graphic. When people hear kill, it's automatically like shock value. Like, oh, shoot. Even with drill. Like, because it's, uh, it's such a, what Chief Keef did to with drill music, mm. really like, it's a bad stigma around drill music. So when people hear drill, they don't even understand how that could be Christian. Mm. But it is. Drill is really just a sign. Like, right. it's, that's really what it is. So you can have Christian drill music. You can have other religious drill music, whatever. Drill music is just that sound. So, yeah, that's like like I said, that's really what it means to, to kill a demon. And I knew what I was doing, though. Like, yeah, yeah. when we were sitting in the studio before anybody knew me, like, I'm talking about had, I probably had 100 monthly listeners. We knew, we saw this before it ever happened. We would sit in the studio, probably like five of me and my homies, and we all on the same page. They like, bro, you're going to do it for Detroit. Like, you going to knock down the door for everybody that look and sound like us mm. and that wanted people. Like, growing up, we wanted something like this. Wow. But it, it just wasn't there. Like, it, it seemed like it was like kind of things would be sugar-coated a little bit. We wanted somebody that was just in your face with it, that was going to say some controversial stuff, that was going to come crazy, but, like, really stand for God at the same time. That's hard, bro. So, yeah, we saw it at an at a early stage of my career, and, we, and they said it. All my homies would be like, bro, you going to get flack for it. But, like, it, it's cool. Like, we, bro, we from Detroit, like. We, we standing on business. Like, I, yeah, I feel like, you. Hey, 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 hey. You know what I'm saying? Like, Come on. For real. But, yeah. and Dre, why do you yeah. think it's important for <clears throat> artists like DKG to, yeah. to stand on what they on and be? Um, like, why is, why, why is it what he's saying important for our space and for some of the yeah. people who are just, to be blunt, put off or, yeah. or intimidated? Like, right, right, right. why is this, why is a DKG necessary for culture? You know what uh, I'm saying? I, I feel like, you know, you know, a lot of um, hip hop music is is black culture, and a lot of you know black people haven't seen things that look like them. Uh. It's a certain, it's a certain like, uh, 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 financial status that you come from. Mm -hmm. uh, you experience the world differently, right? And I think now, like artists like DKG, Big Breeze, uh, One KP, Son, Few. I think they're they're speaking from our perspectives who who came from that right. who came out of poverty or came out the hood you know what I'm saying so we're finally hearing ourselves in Christian music and and it's and they're telling our stories while they're you know also you know uh, praising Christ and, and and giving the glory back to God so that's something that too I feel like it's gonna save a lot of souls too a lot of people that have amazing gifts and talents is going to see how to use their gift for Christ. Yep. Because it's like, we don't want to do pop music or we don't want to do CCM. We still want to do hip hop and we still want it to be cool and we still wanted to have a certain swag to it. Yep. And artists like DKG, Breeze, Few, all the people I named, is showing these kids how to create that music and mm. still give God the glory, you know what I mean, in it. That's and so hard. it's important to have these examples Right. For our culture to grow, you know what I mean. I mean that's it. I mean that's that's faith, music, and culture. I'm always a fan of nuance, um, diversity, and, and expression, yeah. and, and delivery. And we have to we have to just acknowledge that everybody's not gonna express it the same. Everybody's not gonna agree on everything. But at the in the in your heart of hearts, I'm hearing a sincere dude being out here repping the Lord in his own way. So yeah. I also want to get into more on this next segment. Um, what you got going on now. But yeah, stay tuned. This is the 116 Life of Holy Culture Radio, um, Sirius Channel 154. I'm your house. I'm oh, sorry. I am your host, Ace Harris. It's my man, DKG Kai, my man, Dre Hunter. We're going to tap in after this break. Yeah, stay tuned. Welcome, welcome back. Um, this is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 154. I'm your host, Ace Harris, here with my man, DKG Kai and Dre Hunter. And we're just having a, we, this is like, this is like barbershop talk, but this is like real talk. This is ministry yeah. talk. Faith talk, music talk, culture talk, and 
I feel like I'm hanging with my bros right now. Sure. Really getting into like some real stuff. Mm-hmm. And sometimes these conversations happen a lot on the sideline of our, in the alleys of our studios, Dre. Mm-hmm. They happen in the silos of the office space, happen in the group chats, but they don't happen enough on these kind of platforms. Yeah. I just want to affirm you, bro, and say like, bro, you, you are authentically who you are and you already know this so you don't need, you don't need my permission, yeah, but I just want to yeah, encourage yeah, you to sure. like, like, God can work through people at, basically on the way he has them to, yeah. to see his glory be manifested, to reach those who may not be reached by other people's expression. Yeah. And I feel like, yeah, just, you know, I think we need to give space specifically. I'm, I'm speaking to Christian hip hop too. Cause I, I, I know I got a little like, you know, people may say I have a little like snobbery energy or a little like we the theological, uh, you know, righteous ones. It's like, and we, I think Christian hip hop has got better at getting off that high horse. Yep. But seeing people like you, DKG Kyle, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. If we pull up to do some ministry and fellowship in certain spaces, bro, yeah. they're not listening to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They ain't listening yep. to me. And honestly, they might not, they probably ain't listening to Lil Cray either. Yeah. But they gonna tap in with you. For sure. They gonna see how you dress, yep. how you dripped out, you know what I'm saying, got your braids, yep. how you talking about killing Dean, but you literally are unashamedly one with six life, unashamed life. Yep. You're preaching the gospel, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, w- w- why are we so upset? You know what I'm saying? Oh, yes. Like, we need to give space. So anyway, uh, I wanted to, you had a line in your song. I, can't, I, I don't know if it's some hood jumping, but you said something like, I make Christian bangers for the hood, homies. <laughs> yeah. Talk about that. Like, what yeah. you mean? Like, <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Like, man, I, I hate I can't remember that exact word, but yeah, it was something along the lines of that, like, um, I do though. Like, I make I make music for everybody for sure. Like, I, cause like I said, I'm definitely doing a better job at that now. Like, being more versatile. So I got stuff. I'm about to drop a whole worship tape. Like, that's an exclusive. True. Oh, yeah. yo, we, we got gotta tap, we gotta yeah. tap in on yeah. that. Exclusive. Some, trap, some, trap, some drill worship. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You gonna love it, bro. For real. Don't, yeah. You gonna love you it. Do you see my sight in my <laughs> eyes? <laughs> all right, you know that's my bad. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Right, so, right. so yeah, like I'm trying to I'm trying to definitely expand. You know, just to grab every audience, but. My heart though is like for the people that get looked over. And like I said, I feel like with church culture, with Christian hip hop culture, a lot of times it is them hood homies that, that get Let's call it what it is. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's called what it is. That, that don't look like, cause y'all can't see it, but I'm, I mean, I'm tatted up. All the time. I got two sleeves dang near. So it's like, I, feel you. I go somewhere, you know, even when I, I used to work for, this is a quick, quick little story. This just kind of put things in perspective for me. And it was wild. I used to work for Amazon. Um, Oh, thank God he delivered. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yo, he, yo that's, that's a real heart. Yeah. Don't, y'all, y'all don't see this? This is like, no this is like unashamed. Yeah. No care. At least. Man, Thankful to, grateful to God. Oh, for God. real. That's all oh, God. But yeah. yeah, man, I was working for Amazon, and um, I just remember being in this prestigious neighborhood is what I'll say. And I had short sleeves on. Mind you, like my hair wasn't out. Like you couldn't see my hair or nothing like that, but you could see my tattoos. Mind you, I'm in an Amazon vest, like in the Amazon truck. So you know what I'm coming here to do. The lady come outside and she opens up the door and then she automatically like grabs her kid, you know, like, Mm. and like was act like so afraid. Mind you, she said, I'm like, okay, maybe you just like, it was a jump scare. But then like the expression stayed on her face. Yeah. And I say that to say this, like, that's how it feels in Christian rap sometimes. Like, that's how it feels when I'm on TikTok and I post my stuff and then I got all these Pharisees in my comments, you know, talking about, oh, you going to hell for doing this. You going to hell for doing that, X, Y, Z. Or you talking about killing, like, you're not even trying to hear me out. Like, that lady wouldn't even gave me a fair chance. Mm. She never would have gave me a fair chance. And it's the same thing with, like I said, some of the people in Christian rap. Like, they won't even give my music a shot just because of how it sounds. Or as soon as you hear the bass line, you know what I'm saying? It sound like something that you've heard on the secular radio. So you won't even give me a shot. What what could we do better as like, I'm saying, leaders in this space to yeah. help make room for people that come from spaces like you? You know what I'm saying? What yeah, Help me. Because I, I I think there is, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Yeah. Sometimes white America, white Christian culture, white evangelical culture doesn't understand the nuances of blackness yep. in America. Yep. There is, I'm from the suburbs. Two-parent household, <laughs> Only black kid in my class till so sixth grade. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My parents weren't rich, but I grew up, but my, my church was in the hood on Sundays. So, so Fuse Church House Trap House song mm. speaks to my story specifically yeah. because literally in the hood on every Sunday, I'd be in the hood at church. Yeah. There was literally a trap house across the street from the church. Mm. 
So the kids who are in church, it ain't Christian culture. And I'm not here to shame. the, the A lot of our base comes from those spaces, those communities. Yeah. We appreciate y'all. I affirm y'all. I'm just saying, people like DKG, they wasn't going to like Christian youth camps at conference with these no. big old stages and festivals and <laughs> productions. And it wasn't, that wasn't their youth church experience. Mm -hmm. So we just need to give space for people to know that the Christian experience um, as a black man and the black church yeah. In the hood, in these streets, it's going to look and feel different. Yep. So we just need to not be so critical and judgmental. And this is not just to my white brothers and sisters. This is also to my my black suburban yeah. kids, too, who, yeah. who like come from, like, the, the, I call it like Cosby kids and Evans yep. kids. Yep. I, I see it clear as day because I'm like, I'm not, I, mean, I still have my blind spots, but I'm like, yeah, I was in the, my church is in the trap. And I'm like, hold up, why? Mm -hmm. I learned quickly, like, oh, there's two sides of America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's, like, well upbringing. Yep. And it's like poverty and chaos. Yeah. yeah. And so we just need to make room for that. See, I, I just had to yeah, get that yeah. off, you know? No, for sure. Like, I appreciate y'all for what y'all are doing, though. Like, because going back to the question that you asked, like, what can y'all do better? I think y'all are doing it. Like, and the reason I say that is because, I'm going to be honest, when I first started making music, bro, I, this is me just being totally transparent. When I first started making music and I knew what I wanted to really go full fledged in the Christian rap thing, I just sat back one day and had a moment because, like, when you do Christian rap, you automatically think reach. Like, the way I make it is to go to reach. Like, I'm going to know I made it when I get to reach. Like, <laughs> like that's just, that's just you know, the the, the stigma. And, I, and a lot of cases, that is true. Like, for real, for real. Like, what y'all doing here is amazing. But I said it to say this. I sat back one day and I realized I'm like, reach ain't going to touch me. For real. Like, I had, a, I, had, I had a couple moments where I just sat back on my bed or, like, at the studio. And I'm talking to my homies. And I'm like, but they ain't ever going to reach out to me. Like, I'm, I'm going to just have to thug it out myself, like, for <laughs> real. So it's like, I said to say this, with y'all actually giving me a shot, you know, like, I appreciate that, for real. Because, like I said, y'all didn't y'all didn't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, Drake could have just, like a lot of people do, be undercover with me and hit me on the DM like, hey, bro, you hard. But, like, never, gotcha. you know what I'm saying? Like, like it's, it's like fake support. It's, yeah. it's, I want to make sure that when he pop, he can say I was right. there. That's it. I was, yeah. But we yeah. have... This is why I, this is why I push back on even Christians. Our support mm -hmm. needs to show up in our hands. Yeah, exactly. So like, and again, we're not saying we sign it. It's not even about signing. Yeah. It's about supporting and yeah. platforming, and equipping. Because look, Reach Records is not the golden standard. It's like, mm -hmm. but there, like I said, there's people that you speak to yep. that our audience may be a little like, yeah, our predominant. I don't want to, speak, but our predominant. They're, they're a little like, it's new to them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I know in my heart. When I go to Cleveland Avenue, when I go to Vine City, mm -hmm. when I'm serving in the bruh, they some some of the music that is in Christian hip hop just may not resonate with them, honestly. Right, right, right. Yep. It just not. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because yep. yeah. you and then cause you talking about I I said after after ask this last line, mm -hmm. you say the word Bible blicky a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's actually kinda <laughs> we can we, we can turn it on a lighthearted note. Yeah, for sure. So what <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, you you make a lot of Christian lifestyle music. Yeah. What's like I, I was I'm listening. I'm like, okay, he's talking about Bible blicky babies, yep. dating. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm like, I'm like, I'm I like a married dude, like 12 years. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. but at the same time, I was like dating yeah. at 25, yeah, trying yeah. to date my Christian wife. Yep. It's okay. We need a little lifestyle. Yeah. It's low. It's low key like a uh, songs of Solomon type, but not mm, not like yeah, that. Yeah. Now I got an R&B joint that's coming soon too. Oh word, Come crazy. On, talk talk to us a little bit about why that's important too. Well, like like, the, like life Christian lifestyle music yeah. that's not. Content wise, always about edifying yeah, and yeah. killing our demons, but yeah. it's also just you being a Christian, dating, dating girl, dating women, yeah, for respecting sure. women. You for know? sure, like I tell people all the time, like I'm a real artist, bro. Like people look at me and just think, oh, he's just a drill rapper, like he's just a rapper. Like no, I'm not a rapper. I'm an artist, and the reason I say that is like I go to the studio. It's hard for me. Like you can't just tell me, hey, make a song about this today. Like, I got to feel something. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's where y'all get the Bible blicky babies. Like, because in my head, I'm like, man, I got to, I got to give me a little, little yeah. Like, I, I got to get me something like that's going to be really supportive. That's, that's going to love God for real. Well, she got to have that swag. And I'm really talking to my homies about that. And I go to the studio. I'm like, shoot, I'm about to just make a song about it. I'm mm. about to just, you know. So it's like that, that lifestyle music is important because it give people like, like I said, is. Not a break from everything else, but sometimes you want to hear a Christian perspective on just real life stuff. Facts. Right, right, you know what I'm saying? That's right. why I love Fact. like Christian podcasts because 
it's not a sermon. Like, Facts. I, you know what I'm but saying? This is, but this is ministry, yeah, though. Yeah, it's ministry. It's because I get to hear, that's why, like I said, but even when y'all asked me to be on this, I was, bro, I, I couldn't believe it. I got in the car and called my parents because I watched it for real. Like, I, I watched the show just because, like, I like to hear other people's perspective on, you know, just real life stuff. For sure. Absolutely. That's amazing. Yeah. Dre, you got any, uh, any thoughts for Kai? Because I want him to. Sh- I have a. I have a. I have something. That's, I'm gonna ask him. Gonna probably gonna take a. Take yeah. a- I, did, I did want you to kind of <laughs> share your story of how you went from Amazon to <laughs> now you're a full time artist. I think that'll yeah. inspire yeah. some of our listeners. Okay, for sure. Uh, real quick, the last time I was at Reach, this is a very transparent moment. Uh, the last time I was at Reach was what was that? April? Yeah, it was April. Yeah, so I came down here for uh for a show, and we did a couple sessions and stuff like that. So. I'm down here and my, my, you know, the boss at Amazon at the time, I was literally like coming home every day. Like, bro, I got to get off this job. Like, mm. I just, I know this ain't what God is meaning for me to do, especially like I do everything with my career. So it's like, how can I do all these videos, do all this X, Y, and Z and still be working a full-time job? So I came down here and then me and Breeze was talking. I'm like, bro, I got to figure something out. And he was like, bro, be careful, like, what you wish for, because, again, you know how to breathe. Be. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, God funny, my boy. Hey, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you know what I'm saying? God funny. So, yeah. and I'm like, I didn't really catch what he was saying, so I just kind of laughed it off and was like, all right, you don't, you not understand it, bro. Like, I ain't trying to go back to the job. And I get on the plane, and I feel like I heard God say, like, this is going to be your last week with Amazon. Wow. So I'm like, man, that, whatever. That's just my head. So, I literally, man, this is so crazy. I get off the plane. From imagine how this feel. I'm I get to Atlanta, I go to Reach, knock down like one of my childhood dreams to come here. Then I go do a show. I'm crowd surfing, literally, like <laughs> signing autographs, all this. Then get off the plane, jump into an Amazon van. So I'm like, bro, what? Like, what am I doing? Like, this don't even make sense. The next day, my boss called me, like, man, your schedule too crazy. Like, you, I'm gonna be honest, like, we gotta let you go. Wow. Like, get, like scheduling. That's crazy. And he, what, what really made me mad was that he brought up me being at Reach. Like, he seen it on Instagram. Oh, good. His son, his son did. So he was like, oh, man, you know, you'll be fine. Like, y'all seen you at the. You his, know son, his, his son tapped in? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's. It's, that was even crazier, though, because now I'm going to work and people know who I am. I was so upset, bro. I'd be tell, in the tell yard. Your, tell your manager, it look, it may look one way, yeah, but the right. climb is a little... You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, uh, so money. they thinking like, oh, I got to reach money. Bro, I ain't even signed to them. Like, this is just like an experience for me. Like, I'm just here <laughs> working on some stuff. So yeah, man, it, it, like, it was crazy. So when he let me go, I'm sitting there and I'm like, bro, what am I about to do? Long story short, like a week later, Distro Kid, I checked my Distro Kid account and I did the math on like, where my streams have been going and where they at consistently. And I'm like, whoa, like they just sent me this? I'm like, bro, this is double my Amazon check. Mm, wow. Literally, like a week after. So wow. I'll tell you, bro, God, like, don't y'all can't tell shout, me. Shout God out that Distro Kid Ties line too. Oh, yeah, in one of your songs. I was oh, yeah, like, I was, was like, like oh, that's a real yeah. yeah. Like, I said the dist- at the Distro Kid gotta pay the ties you know line. What I'm like, saying? Oh, that's for sure. Um that's man, thank you for asking that, Dre, or, yeah. or prompting that question. Yeah. Um well, DKG, I want you to just speak, man, one last note for the people, what you got going on, mm. anything you want to encourage the people with, man. I know you're also like a youth pastor, yeah, yeah. and you do ministry. Just, I mean, what do you want to leave people with, and mm. also let them know how they can find you, any new projects you got coming. But yeah, sure. you, your floor is yours, my brother. Man, the first part of what I got coming is um, a worship tape. Uh, it's not an album, but it's like like five songs, okay. and it's like worship slash trap worship. So it's some y'all gonna get a totally different side of me for sure. So um, that's what's coming. But beyond that, man, it's just I just been working. Like I really been trying to do my best to continue to stay consistent, especially now that you know my life is literally dependent on this now. Sure, you know what I'm saying. But um, but something to leave everybody with, man. It's like it's two things. Come to God now. Like, and that sounds so elementary, but what I mean by that is like, don't wait till you get yourself together because you can't get yourself together. Like, come to God now. It, you don't, don't wait till you're ready. And the last thing is like, I want people to understand like my heart with this. My music may sound one way and it may, I may look one way, but the reason I do this is the same reason that I started Youth Pastor. I want to win souls for the kingdom of God. Mm. That's it. Like, mm. if it, like I said it in a song, if I stop winning souls, I'm done with this music. I'm done. Like, if, if if I see that this stuff ain't working no more and, and people ain't messing with it, people ain't getting saved, it's not bringing people closer to God, y'all got my word. Like, I'm done doing music. Boy, I, that's a mic drop type statement, man. I, I I appreciate that, man. Just your your confidence. 
uh, your your artistry um, and your le- you know I think leadership is the word I want to mm. just wrap this conversation because you move like a leader, Appreciate and that's that. why I think what God calls all of us to lead in our faith in our in our music and in the culture that we exist in. That's the one one six life. You know what I'm yeah. saying. Lead well, love well, and, and live that out. So it's a great conversation, man. We got to have you back when you Most come back definitely. in town. Most Dre, it was good happening in with you, man, having you here. Um, but sure. yeah, this is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 154. And that's a wrap, folks. Uh, tune in every Tuesday, 8 p.m. And yeah, let's get it. Demon Killer Gang in the building. Demon Killer Gang. <laughs> All right, that's a wrap. <laughs>